Yeah, I would like to know from Christian Prince uh, if he finds it unholy to mention Allah's name before sex, why does the Bible God mention donkeys, penises in Ezekiel 23 in his own holy Bible? So can you please answer this question? And the microphone is free. We pause for us the verse, and I'm not the one who's speaking about the uh, uh, penis. It's your brother who's saying he cannot mention the name of Allah in the bathroom. I can mention the name of my God anywhere, because my God is with me anywhere. Not like your God. Your God, he cannot enter the bathroom. I enter the bathroom, Allah don't dare to enter. He is scared. Maybe he is scared from my. Uh, I don't know. Your mic, uh, donkey penis, your mic. And by the way, as long as you are talking about donkey penis, can you explain to me why your prophet asking his donkey? First time a prophet of God is speaking to a donkey, asking him if you like females, why your prophet is so worried about his penis? Huh? Prophet of God is asking, a prophet of God having conversation with donkey, he asked him, do you like females? Do I? No problem. First answer the question why your God was so fascinated with penises, he had to mention it in his own Bible in Ezekiel 23. You did not give me the verse, post the verse, and it doesn't say what you are saying. And you will see who is fascinating. It's your prophet who mentioned the penis everywhere. Even your prophet, he said, he will make your penis in this palm tree. Right? When you go to heaven, Mr. Uh, what is his name? Uh, 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 Jesus is Allah. He is saying that his God will make his penis in this palm tree and he will look like a palm tree. And now he's complaining about penis when everything in his family is based on penis. Your mind. CP, read the verse, it's right in front of you. Ezekiel 23, 20, 21. There she lusted after this a... This is not about donkeys and this is not about penis, you feel me? This is about the, those, the two tribes of Israel, who they are having relationship with those who they are the Babylon and the Egyptian. But because you are a filthy man like you're a prophet, what you can say is what the verse is saying. Read the verses before and read the verses after. And you will see it's speaking about two cities. There's an old sister and a younger sister. And they present the two tribes of Israel. You know mind. Yes, I understand the parable is explaining two cities, but why is the parable describing it in a sex manner, sir? That's basically... Because they are having sexual relationship with the infidels. It's haram. If your sister, she will marry someone who is a Hindu. Allah is it halal in Islam? You mind? So, Christian Prince, you have no problem of God describing this sexual intercourse in this sort of manner, in a pornographic image. You have absolutely no problem in that. Because it's pornographic. Because it's what they are doing. You are committing sin, having sexual relationship with the foreigners. That's what it is. Now, as long as you have a problem with sexual relationship, why your Quran says that Allah will give you women in the heaven who no man, listen carefully, no man made them their vagina bleed or genie. That's the Quran says, وَلَمْ يَكْمُثَهُنَّ Allahu Akbar Christian Prince, you got shattered by your own Bible. 
Christian Prince, come on, man. This is a holy book of God and it mentions women lusting over gigantic penises. It's in your Bible. Dotted again. Gigantic penis? <laughs> this is the Muslim penis. You have a prophet himself. He has a chapter in the Quran about his penis. <laughs> If a penis is broken, why Allah is broken? Allah, he can't the answer. He's going to the Qur'an. He's going to the Qur'an. He can't answer. Did Allah cut the penis off, or God man? And did he send a dish of shish kebab to your prophet to make his penis stand hard? Yes or no? You're my penis God. The God who sent the shish kebab dish for the penis of Muhammad. What is the problem? Allahu Akbar, you're recorded and you're going to YouTube. You're going to YouTube because you can't defend your own Bible. You can't defend your Bible. Allahu Akbar. Allahu Akbar. Allahu Akbar. The Muslims are going to love this. The Muslims, Allahu Akbar, are going to love this. You have been exposed, coward. You could not defend your own book. Your pornographic, filthy book. Goodbye. He's not answering. Welcome back to Jesus or Muhammad. Uh, if you're new to this program, we explore issues relevant to Christianity and Islam. The, the truth matters here. And uh, if Muhammad's a prophet, I would love to know it. I would love uh, Muslims to show me that Muhammad is a prophet. Uh, no, not at all. I, I think you're just making up things because you're an Isla Islamophobe. <laughs> no, we're not, we're not talking about that issue right now. The point is, we don't bring that up a lot, and, and we could, but it's just, it's, it's, we don't even like to talk about it. There are certain things you know, we, we don't even want to talk about. Uh, but there are times when we do need to raise some important issues. Um, and this is one of the days when we're going to raise uh, an issue where it's, it's, it feels weird even talking about it. And I'm going to begin by reading a passage. And the firstborn said to the younger, our father is old, and there is not a man on earth to come into us after the manner of all the world. Come. Let us make our father drink wine, and we will lie with him, so that we may preserve offspring through our father. Genesis 1931 Lot is so intoxicated, he recalls nothing of the encounter afterwards. But there is a lasting reminder. Both his daughters conceive and bear sons. A show we'll have a show yes retract talking this. about how dumb we are precisely right um, but I mean if we look especially from a biblical perspective right in other words the people we look to as our examples we look to them as our examples because we we, we want to be better people we want to be more like them David is a criminal by all of the legal regulations that we know from the Bible David is an adulterer and he's a murderer, and God knows it. One evening, David went for a stroll on the roof of the palace. As he looked out over the city, he noticed a woman of unusual beauty taking her evening bath. He sent to find out who she was, and was told she was Bathsheba, the wife of Uriah. Then David sent for her, and when she came, he slept with her. Second Samuel 11, 2. The woman was very beautiful. David sent someone to inquire about the woman. It was reported, this is Bathsheba, the wife of Uriah the Hittite. So David sent messengers to get her, and she came to him, and he lay with her. Second Samuel 11, 2. Bathsheba becomes pregnant through her adulterous affair with the great leader. It's a complicated problem, and David initiates a shocking solution. He orchestrates a murder. King David arranges for the battlefield death of Bathsheba's husband, Uriah. King David's eldest son, Amnon, 
falls sick with passion for his own half-sister. He was in such straits over his sister that he became sick. Since she was a virgin, Amnon thought it impossible to carry out his designs toward her. 2 Samuel 13.2 David's son rapes his own half-sister, Tamar. But when she brought them near him to eat, he took hold of her and said to her, Come, lie with me, my sister. She answered him, No, my brother, do not force me, for such a thing is not done in Israel. Do not do anything so vile. But he would not listen to her, and being stronger than she, he forced her and lay with her. 2 Samuel 13.11 after the incestuous rape, a curious change comes over Amnon. He is overwhelmed with disgust for his half-sister. Then Amnon was seized with a very great loathing for her. Indeed, his loathing was even greater than the lust he had felt for her. 2 Samuel 13.15 The rape victim's response is unexpected. She begs her attacker not to make her leave. She said to him, No, my brother, for this wrong in sending me away is greater than the other that you did to me. 2 Samuel 13.16 The girl begs her brother who raped her to marry her, perhaps because she thinks she had no other choice. Absalom now challenges King David himself and drives the monarch from the city. Then, in one of the most shocking events in the Bible, he rapes his father's wives. <laughs> so listen, uh, that would be creepy enough as it is in the English translation. That would be odd and strange enough. To... Rejoice in the wife of your youth. May her breasts satisfy you at all times. May you be intoxicated always by her love. Proverbs 5, 19. And he said to her, O loved one, delectable maiden, you are stately as a palm tree, and your breasts are like its clusters. Oh, may your breasts be like clusters of the vine, and the scent of your breath like apples and your kisses like the best wine. Song of Solomon 7, 7 And he said to her, Your breasts are two fawns, twins of a gazelle. Your belly is a mound of wheat edged with lilies. Your navel is the moon's drinking cup. May it brim with wine. Song of Solomon 7, 2. The man says to his lover that her navel is like a goblet filled with wine. And yet, when we look at this word for navel, it probably is referring to a piece of her anatomy that's a little bit lower than her belly button. My beloved thrust his hand into the opening and the core of my being trembled on account of him. I rose to open to my lover with my hands dripping with myrrh, my fingers flowing myrrh upon the handles of the bolt. Song of Solomon 5, 4 The question remains, should it be in the Bible? to Muslims, and again, let me just qualify why we're doing this. Jesus has not gotten the flesh. Jews are fabricating these sources. Yeah, so if Muslims are thinking, hey, David, Sam, I don't have to listen to you, you're a bunch of racist, Islamophobic bigots, we're saying, fine, don't believe us, assume from the beginning we're liars. If we are wrong, and you can document we're mistaken, we will accept correction and admit on the show we were wrong. We'll there is also a great celebration of physical passion between man and woman. An entire book of the Bible, called the Song of Songs, is devoted to the joy of sex. 
The song is a collection of free-form poems written in the voices of a maiden and her lover. My beloved thrust his hand into the opening, and my inmost being yearned for him. I rose to open to my beloved, and my hands dripped with myrrh, my fingers with liquid myrrh, upon the handles of the bolt. You are stately as a palm tree, and your breasts are like its clusters. I say I will climb the palm tree and lay hold of its branches. As an apple tree among the trees of the wood, so is my beloved among young men. With great delight I sat in his shadow, and his fruit was sweet to my taste. Sustain me with raisins, refresh me with apples, for I am sick with love. How graceful are your feet in sandals, O queenly maiden! Your rounded thighs are like jewels, the work of a master hand. Your navel is a rounded bowl that never lacks mixed wine. The lover says that his beloved's navel is like a goblet of wine. But when we look closely at the Hebrew, we find out that the anatomy that he is describing may be in fact a bit lower than the belly button. Right? Yeah. Exactly. I love that, right? That's what I'm saying. <laughs> Her, it says it, yeah. Her, it's right there, yeah. I mean, <laughs> some crazy stuff. Yeah. People aren't even going to believe us. We're quoting no, it I mean, right out of their... It, we're not gonna, making it up. It's yeah. right here. And how, well, what's the mention? How dare you say this? How dare we tell you what's in your sources that you never bother to read because you just accept it blindly? How dare we bother to open up your sources and say, well, let me tell you what's actually in your sources? Shame on us for doing that. For instance, we can't stand this. We want to kill you, blah, 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 blah. We hate you guys. We, we, ju we just wanted to live in la-la land where we sit there and close our ears and don't want to do. He spilled his seed upon the ground whenever he went into his brother's wife so that he would not give offspring to his brother. What he did was displeasing in the sight of the Lord, and he put him to death. Genesis 38, 9. Onan had sex with his sister-in-law, but stopped too soon. When Judah saw her, he thought her to be a prostitute. He went over to her at the roadside and said, Come, let me come in to you for he did not know she was his daughter-in-law. Genesis 38, 15. Yet how can it be that Judah does not recognize his own son's widow? Jesus' foremothers include Tamar, who dressed as a prostitute to seduce her father-in-law. Rahab the harlot, who helped the Israelites conquer Jericho. Ruth, who craftily beguiled her dead husband's kinsman, Boaz, into her bed. Bathsheba, who had an adulterous affair with King David. Yet tradition says that one of Jesus' closest associates was a prostitute. However, the ancient belief that Mary Magdalene was once a harlot is not supported by anything in the New Testament. But it also gives no information on his life from puberty until he was 30 years old. Some scholars make the assertion, shocking to many, that Jesus may have taken a wife during those years. Jesus' sexuality is certainly an issue that troubles biblical scholars and troubled the ancient world as well. Certainly the Bible views him as celibate. But we have various Gospels which are not canonical, which did not make it into the Bible, which tell us things like Jesus kissed Mary Magdalene on the mouth frequently. But polygamous marriages, concubines, slaves used for sex, all this was found in the Hebrew Bible. You want to do. You want to do. You liar! You're a deceiver. Let me just, for the sake of time, read what what is leading, or do you want me to read another source? Um, read one more. Okay, and then we'll good. We'll wrap things up for everyone. Okay. Ezekiel 23, verse 20 to 21. 
There she lusted after her lavers, whose genitals were like those of donkeys, and whose emissions was like that of horses. So you longed for the lewdness of your youth, when in Egypt your bosom was caressed and your young breast fondled. People are always shocked about all the things they find in the Bible that they didn't hear in Sunday school or at synagogue. The Bible can be very steamy. It reads almost like an ancient Israelite love manual. It is very frank. It is very graphic in its descriptions of physical love. How on earth does this kind of work get to be scripture? King Solomon had 300 wives and 700 concubines. Solomon is certainly the one person in the Bible who might be thought of as having the most uh, sexual activity because he's got hundreds of wives and concubines. And, of course, he is responsible for their sexual satisfaction. However, if you grant Solomon, say, a 12-hour uh, day trying to service a thousand women, that works out to something like six seconds a bride. And In the case of rape, if the victim was engaged, the criminal was condemned to death. In other cases, the offender was required to marry his victim and was never granted a divorce.